Some PDFs are built as forms, which means they have fields into which letters and numbers can be entered. It's nearing tax time here in the United States, so what better example to use than an IRS form? The IRS actually does a pretty good job of making its PDFs fairly easy to fill out electronically. I have Form 940 open here, and as I move the cursor over the text fields, they light up in purple, letting me know that it's a text entry field. Click and I can start entering text, just like I might with a form on a web page. We don't need to use the Markup Text tool for this, but we also can't control the look or size of the text entered. The checkboxes over here can also easily be filled with a click. When entering figures for certain amounts in this form, you need to enter the dollar amount and the cents separately. We can't start typing the total amount and let it fill in like you might expect. So again, I need to enter the dollar amount and then the cents, or vice versa. Down on the next page we have a signature area that I would use markup to add my signature to. Even the payment voucher on the final page can be filled out as a form. So I could then send this entire PDF to a tax preparer, never having needed to print it out myself. But if I just save this PDF and close it, when I reopen the PDF, it can still be edited. Even if I'm planning to send this to a trusted tax pro or accountant, I probably don't want all the numbers and information entered in the form to be easily changed. What we can do to prevent this is to export as a PDF. I'll add completed to the file name and save it to my desktop. Now when I reopen the completed 940, the text fields are no longer active, and the text that I already entered can't be easily changed. So that's a quick example of how a PDF can be used to enter a lot of information, along with a signature, allowing you to completely fill out a form without needing to print it. Next up, we're going to look at how we can secure a PDF when sending it electronically.